Hey, you know, I came up here earlier and I looked. And there was a box. But it says, do not open until Christmas. So I guess I should put it back, shouldn't I? No. <laughs> I think I should open it, right? Yeah. But it says, do not open until Christmas. Why if I just shake it a little, see what's in it? Uh -oh. <laughs> or I broke it. <laughs> well, maybe I should have paid attention to what it said and just waited till Christmas, huh? You know, that's what one thing we're supposed to do is we're supposed to be patient. Now, just like that, when I was little, I was the first one as soon as a present got wrapped. Be over there shaking it, trying to always was told, you have to wait till Christmas. Well, that's kind of what one of our scriptures was talking about today. It says in Matthew, when John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word to his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come? Are you the one that we've been waiting for? You know, that's just like the presents. They were asked to Jesus, Are you the one that we've been told about? Or should we wait for another? And all the prophets from the Old Testament told about the Messiah coming. And when he was born, the shepherds and everybody came to the manger and was looking at, are you the one? Are you the one that we've been told about? Or should we be waiting for another? I mean, the Messiah in a little <coughs> feeding trough-like deal? Is he the one that we've been waiting for? Yeah. But we had to have patience. He was born. It's patience. You will see. When John sent his disciples, are you the one we've been waiting for? Or, or should we wait for another? Jesus said, go tell John what you have seen and heard. You know, be patient. <laughs> be patient. <laughs> and that's what you need to do with your Christmas presents, right? <laughs> You forgot. <laughs> but you have to be patient. <laughs> so would y'all like to pray? Yes. Oh gracious God, we want to thank you for all these glorious gifts that you have given us throughout our lives and to come. Especially the most important gift of all, your son Jesus Christ who has gave us the gift of, of, of taking our sins to the cross. In whose name we pray, amen. You can't have Christmas without lights. And you can't have Christmas without music. The two go together, as Forrest Gump would say, like peas and carrots. Now have you ever been to Athens to see the Land of Lights Christmas Park? The folks there have put together a dancing light show that is over a mile long with over 4 million lights, including more than 50 motion control light scenes and 60 different musical scenes that dance to the rhythm of the sound of the seasons. The song of the season, at least the religious ones, share a common theme. We sing, joy to the world, the Lord has come, let earth receive its king. The words in Psalms 96 and its companion Psalms 98 are reflected in Isaac Walt's masterful creation that remains the most published Christian hymn in North America. Joy to the world is not the only song that carries that same theme. Listen to the words of Charles Wesley's great hymn. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinner reconciled. 
Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald's angel sings, glory to the newborn king. And the refrain from O come, O come, Emmanuel proclaims, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Can we forget, O come, all ye faithful? Doesn't it say how we're supposed to come? Joyful and triumphant. Each of these psalms of the seasons echo exactly what the psalmist sang in Psalms 96, 11 through 13. Let the heavens be glad. Let the earth rejoice. Let the seas roar and all that fills it. Let the fields exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. The season is a joyous season. And we light the candle, the pink candle, to symbolize the Lord Jesus Christ, our joy. And on this Grunty Sunday, and yes, that's what it is called. It is Latin for rejoice. We light a pink candle because the color goes back in church traditions to a single pink rose during the season of Lent. During the Lenten season, that was traditionally marked with fasting. The early church signaled out one Sunday to feast and celebrate the coming joy. On this day, the Pope, yes, I said the Pope, and yes, the Advent candle is a strange mixture of Catholic and Lutheran and other traditions, would give out a single pink rose to honor an outstanding citizen. Clergy even began to wear pink vestments and de decorate the church in, in pink to mark the day. Well, we have lost the seven candles of Lent, but gained the four candles of Advent. And amidst the four candles, you still see a single pink candle, the candle of joy. There is though a bit of a hollow ring each year at Christmas when we speak of joy. Christmas is, for many, the saddest time of the year. Many people find the stress of the holiday season overwhelming. Others battle depression, social isolation, and loneliness. Still others or grieving the loss of the, of the loved one. I mean, think about this. We've had a death in our church family just a month ago. It's hard to be joyous when we're grieving. So, songs of joy and smiling faces and parties and gifts don't really mean that much when you're living in the streets in a cardboard box or in a shelter with just the clothes on your back. There are, in fact, a lot of people having a chippy moment right now. Y'all remember chippy, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I've used him in several sermons already. Then I did a little research back story in it. This actually happened in Corpus Christi, Texas. So, it all began when Chippy's owner decided to clean out his cage with the vacuum cleaner. 
She stuck the nozzle in the cage to clean up the bottom of the cage and suddenly the phone rang. She reached for the phone with her free hand and not realizing it, her hand with the nozzle rose slowly upward and sucked up Chippy into the vacuum. Realizing what she had done, she dropped the phone and turned off the vacuum cleaner. With her heart in her throat, she opened the vacuum cleaner bag to rescue poor Chippy. Chippy was stunned and covered head to toe with dust. But thankfully, he was still alive. She grabbed him and rushed him into the bathroom, turned on the water full blast and held him under the water, giving him a power washing. Then it dawned on her that Chippy was soaking wet and shivering. So she did what any compassionate pet owner would do. She snatched up the blow dryer and blasted him with hot air. If you weren't here before when I told this story, you may be wondering, if poor Chippy survived this. Yes, he did. But as the owner told the reporter, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He mostly just sits there in his cage, staring. Probably at the closet where the vacuum cleaner is kept. <laughs> Being sucked up, washed out, and blown over, has stolen the joy from his heart. There are a lot of people in the world living their chippy moment this Christmas. Maybe even a few here today. If that's you, this light, this pink candle, is a reminder that you've come to the right place. We must not confuse joy with happiness. The two are not the same. Yes, joy can bring happiness, but happiness, as we discuss, is in the past is to depend upon what happens to us. And what happens to us is not always bright and wonderful. Sometimes life happens to us and life can be unkind. Joy abides in the spirit of what happens because joy is a gift. And the gift is Jesus Christ. He is our joy. See, it works like this. While the happening of life may not be good news, Word of a Savior is good news. As a matter of fact, it is the gospel. There is one who came to deliver us from the brokenness of this world. There is one who came to give us strength. There is one who came to offer hope, to bring peace, to show us love. That one is Jesus Christ. And to a person living the chipping moments of life, the realization that life will not always be like this brings on joy. When we encounter Jesus either in a manger or on the cross or risen in victory over death, joy captures us. Joy overtakes us and it causes us to worship. We get a glimpse of the glory and greatness of God. And the joy captures us. Joy captures us when we see God's promise fulfilled. Joy captures us when we experience God's presence in new and life-changing ways. Oh no, my friends, we can't find joy. Joy finds us in the gift that is Jesus Christ. 
The Apostle Paul knew that joy finds us because it found him. Paul was a chippy. He had been stripped of everything. Locked in a cold, dark, wet prison cell. And had even been sentenced to die. And he sat down to write his friends in Philippi. Yep, I'm in prison again. This time sentenced to die. And oh, by the way, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. From a cold, dark prison cell, Paul writes a brief letter and mentions joy ten times. Ten times. How can he do that? He doesn't have anything to be joyful about. His life is on the line. He is cold, wet, and tired. He has no freedom. Has no shiny car with a bright red ribbon waiting for him in the driveway. No limited time diamond earrings or necklace sale to take advantage of. No latest computer games or smartphones to occupy his time. He is parted from family and friends and can't take a single bit of joy from a job well done because, well, being in prison has put floors and church planning career on hold. Yet, over and over again, Paul brings up joy. Somehow he got it into his head that you don't need all the stuff to have joy. Even his earthly life, being in jeopardy, could not part him from joy. For Paul, joy doesn't come from the world. It comes from God. God is the giver of true joy. God is the giver of a peace that passes all understanding. And it doesn't come from something we buy. It comes from something freely given. A person. Jesus Christ. Paul's greatest joy was his assurance from God. He knew that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is through Christ Jesus our Lord. We too have this great joy. This truth is summed up in a song too, one of my favorites. And I believe the song that captures the heart of Christmas as well as any others. Listen to the words. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the souls felt with its worth. <clears throat> A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a news of glorious morn. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angels' voices. O oh, night divine. O oh, night when Christ was born. O oh, night divine. O oh, night divine. Truly he taught us to love one another. His love, his law is love, and his gospel is peace. Change shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy and grateful glory raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. The light of joy is Jesus Christ. Lights and music. They are peace and carrots indeed. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.